Hello and welcome to the first Fresh Up the Stalls for 2015! Hooray! You just have to imagine the party poppers and anticlimax. Uh, so yes, very exciting. Uh, I'm wishing you all a very, uh, very good new year. I'm actually filming a brand new device. Uh, I got a nice uh, GoPro for Christmas, thank you, and birthday actually. Uh, thank you very much mum and dad. So I have no idea, this is the first time I've ever used the damn thing, so I have no idea if this is great or absolutely bloody awful. Anyway, um, we'll find out soon when I look at it later. Um, doing it from Blackfriars Station because it's kind of on my way home. I just missed the train, um, so I've got like half hour to kill. But to be honest, lovely backdrop, don't you think? It's it's kind of nice. Uh, if you can see it. If you can't, then you just have to take my word for it. Anyway, enough of the slightly tipsy rambling. Uh, what I've been to see tonight is Jerry Herman's The Grand Tour. Very much anticipated. It's been a good 30 years since this uh, first went on in the USA before it's actually premiered European in... Yeah, it's, this is its European premiere. Um, so, very much anticipated. Uh, the team behind it are Daniel Torrento and Tom Sutherland. Very established. Uh, I have yet to see anything they've done badly. So, expectation, uh, expectations? Expectations were certainly running high for this. Um, and, yeah, they delivered. They absolutely delivered. Uh, everything tonight was a really, really great start to 2015. Um, if you don't want to know more about the show, then don't, because I think that's pretty much... What, if you want to sum it up in a nutshell, it's brilliant. I really, really enjoyed it. Great start to 2015. Just said that. So let's 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 actually try and put some structure to this video. So first of all, I think, uh, yeah, book and musical. Um, it's very Jerry Herman, certainly. Um, some of the sound sound uh, some of the songs sound a bit too much like something out of La Cage, which is one of my favourite Herman. What well, is my favourite Herman musical? If I'm honest, but it's all there. But this is what I love about it. So it's. The subject matter is a Polish Jew trying to flee Nazis encroaching on Europe and an anti-Semitic Polish colonel trying to do the same thing. It's an unlikely sort of odd couple of duos, they team up and become travelling companions. A subject which is not really right for humour, not really right for the kind of musical that, that this is. This is very much a traditional Broadway musical. Um, there weren't actually any jazz hands, but it certainly is a very jazz hands musical. It's a very Jerry Herman musical. It's very much in the vein of Mac and Mabel, uh, Lakasha Falls, Hello Dolly, if you know any of those things. But that's what I loved about it. It sits so knowingly awkwardly. It is so, and, but it's very sweet at the same time. It's sweetly awkward, and but very ever so slightly twisted. The tongue is very firmly in cheek for this, uh, but at the same time, it it offers some really touching and heartwarming moments uh, and some really sweeping lilting melodies as well it's it's really unexpected it's what it's what you'd expect from a jerry herman musical at the same uh, in in all that in, in that it has all the broadway tropes but it's not it's what's unexpected is just how it deals with the subject matter and it deals with it very well and that has to go down to the book by michael stewart and mark bramble um it's got that very sort of very dry to the jewish humor but at the times as well it does find it does find a real sort of fear and evil in that time of history as well i'm gonna have to change hands here i mean literally that's probably very messy seamless um, but yeah, it's, I, I think it's great. Uh, music wise, as I already said, there's some wonderful lilting, uh, sweeping melodies. There are some parts, however, that are a little bit drawn out, uh, and lose the momentum quite quickly. Uh, and this is the most, probably the most interesting thing I'm probably going to say about this entire thing. It's written as a big musical spectacular. It's written as sort of you know, the Lacage spectacle that, uh, you know, Herman's most, I, I'd say that was probably Herman's most renowned work to become. It's a very small reduction here at the Findra Theatre, because it's a very small theatre. It's handled fantastically well, don't get me wrong, the reduction is, is great uh, on all aspects of it. But especially in the moments of the music which don't work as well, you really that's when it reminds you most because like some of the bits where it kind of like gets drawn out a little you can imagine like the full Broadway spectacle uh, coming into play uh, for starters there's, there's the um, Manzini Circus uh, a, a wonderful number called One Extraordinary Thing starts off well but it kind of goes on 
and goes on a bit more. And whilst uh, choreographer, uh, oh, where is he? Uh, or her, or whoever the choreographer, uh, Chrysidia Carre, the choreography is great, don't get me wrong, but like, you, it, it, you feel it's missing like spe spectacle, and not visually, not energetically, actually no, a little, not visually, but slightly energetically, especially as the music doesn't, this, yeah. It, it, it feels like it needs a spectacle, so whilst, uh, and that's nothing to do with the production, it has to do with the musical itself. It was written, I feel, as a big musical, and as great as it, uh, Sutherland and Tarento's team have dealt with the reduction, there's still that bit lacking there. That's the only thing I can really say bad about the entire show, is that it just feels like it should have been a bigger thing. Um, and that just comes through in the musical writing. The production, brilliant! Uh, it's it's a tiny space, it doesn't at all feel prompt at any times. I've already mentioned a really great um, uh, choreography, uh, choreography by Chrisidia Carey, something's just fallen out of my program, hooray. Um, Tom Sutherland's direction is great, it uses uh, great use of space, height as well, um, which is always something interesting uh, to sort of add to that sort of variety. I love the set, the set by Phil Lindley. It's very much sort of like hand-drawn atlas, and on vintage Atlas, but also has a very pop-up book feel. Uh, very quaint, uh, very lovable, um, and it, it really kind of reflects the vision. It sort of has that sort of nice sort of almost surreal tongue-in-cheek sort of humour. It kind of it, it, it mimics that almost. It's very it's very sweet. It's very twee. Uh, I, I know tw twee can be kind of used as a negative, but that's kind of it. It, it looks great, especially when they're, they're bringing up bits of scenery from the floor, opening them out from the walls. Very, very versatile, very, very uh, uh, ingenious. Um, cast. I really want to say Alistair Brookshaw is fantastic. He's a leading man in this. He handles himself so, so well. And he does. That's not what I'm going to say. He doesn't. He does. He really does. Brilliant voice. Uh, I love his characterization. Kind of always awkward, a bit bumbling, um, but always sort of uh, very Mr. Brightside uh, of it all. But. In, if I were to say that Alice Brookshaw was excellent, I think it would take away from the fact that uh, the supporting roles, uh, Nick Kyle as Colonel Sturbinsky and Zoe Doano as Marianne, is, I, I don't want to pr over praise Brookshaw because I think uh, Nick and Zoe really deserve just as much praise. Uh, they're incredibly robust, brilliant voices, just as good as uh, Alistair's, if you ask me. Uh, and as a trio, uh, especially with sort of uh, Nick and Alistair's sort of odd couple routine going on throughout, they work really well to uh, with each other. It gets to the end and you, you are, um, you couldn't, you, uh, I, I can't try not to give anything away. There's a bond between them that happens on stage as actors as well as characters that you really get as an audience. Um, so yeah. Uh, it was just brilliant. I'd certainly say go down and see this. I wish, I wish it was on a bigger stage. Uh, I think I would love, love to see the transfer to the suburb where Toronto and Sutherland can really go to town on production. That's not to say they haven't here. They've, they've uh, done an excellent production in the space here. But like, make it that bigger spectacle that the musical wants to be. Uh, and it is, it is generally quite comfortable in how it is at the moment, but it just really needs to be this great spectacle. Uh, even, even more outlandish, even more juxtapos uh, uh, juxtaposed. My arm is now getting very tired, and you're probably really tired of me flailing uh, on a station platform in London, <laughs> enough as it is. So I shall leave you to it, uh, and I'll be back soon. Um, also, you may have noticed this is now going out on my brand new website. So that's a big change in 2015. Um, hopefully that will be all good change as well. Speaking of all change, I probably should try and catch my train. So I shall see you all soon for another Fresh Off the Stalls and absolutely go see the Grand Tour. Um, trying to think of something witty, uh, some witty wordplay on the Grand Tour. Can't right now. Uh, that's probably something to do with the wine I had in the interval. Um, uh, look out for it in my review. All right, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Avoid the new as I say in Wales, and I shall speak to you soon.